the Sinocephala by Photius, Patriarch of Constantinople, 820 to 891 A.D. Translated by John Fries. From T.C.'s History of India. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beginning on page 115 of the Library of Photius, published in 1920. There is a river that flows through India, not large, but about two stades broad. It is called Hipparchus in Indian, meaning in Greek, bestowing all blessings. During thirty days in the year it brings down amber. It is said that in the mountains there are trees on the banks of the river where it passes through, which at a certain season of the year shed tears like the almond, fir, or any other tree, especially during these thirty days. These tears drop into the river and become hard. This tree is called in Indian Siptakora, meaning in Greek sweet, and from it the inhabitants gather amber. It also bears fruit in clusters like grapes, the stones of which are as large as the nuts of Pontus. In the mountains there live men with the head of a dog, whose clothing is the skin of wild beasts. They speak no language but bark like dogs, and in this manner make themselves understood by each other. Their teeth are larger than those of dogs, their nails like those of these animals, but longer and rounder. They inhabit the mountains as far as the river Indus. Their complexion is swarthy. They are extremely just, like the rest of the Indians with whom they associate. They understand the Indian language, but are unable to converse, only barking or making signs with their hands and fingers by way of reply, like the deaf and dumb. They are called by the Indians Calisteri, in Greek Sinocephala, dog-headed. They live on raw meat. They number about 120,000. Near the sources of this river grows a purple flower, from which is obtained a purple dye, as good in quality as the Greek, and of an even more brilliant hue. In the same district there is an animal about the size of a beetle, red as cinnabar, with very long feet, and a body as soft as that of a worm. It breeds on the trees which produce amber, eats its fruit, and kills them, as the woodhouse destroys the vines in Greece. The Indians crush these insects and use them for dyeing their robes and tunics and anything else they wish. The dye is superior to the Persians. The Sinocephali, living on the mountains, do not practice any trade but live by hunting. When they have killed an animal, they roast it in the sun. They also rear numbers of sheep, goats, and asses, drinking the milk of the sheep and whey made from it. They eat the fruit of the Siptokara, whence amber is procured, since it is sweet. They also dry it and keep it in baskets, as the Greeks keep their dried grapes. They make rafts, which they load with this fruit together with well-cleaned purple flowers and 260 talents of amber, with the same quantity of the purple dye and 1,000 additional talents of amber, which they send annually to the king of India. They exchange the rest for bread, flour, and cotton stuffs with the Indians, from whom they also buy swords for hunting wild beasts, bows and arrows, being very skillful in drawing the bow and hurling the spear. They cannot be defeated in war, since they inhabit lofty and inaccessible mountains. Every five years the king sends them a present of 300,000 bows, as many spears, 120,000 shields, and 50,000 swords. They do not live in houses, but in caves. They set out for the chase with bows and spears, and as they are very swift of foot, they pursue and soon overtake their quarry. The women have a bath once a month. The men do not have a bath at all but only wash their hands. 
they anoint themselves three times a month with oil made from milk and wipe themselves with skins the clothes of men and women alike are not skins with the hair on but skins tanned and very fine the richest wear linen clothes but they are few in number they have no beds but sleep on leaves of grass he who possesses the greatest number of sheep is considered the richest and so in regard to their other possessions all both men and women have tails above their hips like dogs but longer and more hairy they are just and live longer than any other men one hundred and seventy sometimes two hundred years End of the Sinocephala by Photius, Patriarch of Constantinople, 820 to 891 A.D.